Uh, yep, I'm gonna. There's the, there goes the recording. And Kevin, if you'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, Sean, that would be terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, well, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are uh, as you join us today. Um, I'm very excited to be able to introduce uh, our speaker, uh, Sean Barnwell. Uh, we have uh, had an ongoing um, series of uh, uh, speakers uh, sponsored by Delta Me Delta. Uh, and uh, this one, uh, yeah, well, I'm as excited as uh, as for any to uh, to learn uh, today um, some perspectives on, on leadership. Um, Sean is uh, one of our one of our own. She is a Delta Mu Delta member. She was recognized as an outstanding student uh, during her master's program. Um, she's definitely a lifelong learner. Uh, so across her career, uh, she continues to learn, learn by observation, by engaging. And I think she would also agree that she learns by sharing um, uh, her insights with, with others. Uh, she has a distinguished career in the uh, U.S. military and the Air Force, uh, served um, uh, served uh, fellow uh, service personnel, uh, especially in the Middle East, but other places uh, as well. Um, and uh, as she left the military, she um, well, she became an entrepreneur, and um, and so she is. Uh, building a, uh, has continued to build a business uh, in a variety of, of ways, but um, the one that's most important to us today is, is uh, right, is, is in terms of um, personnel development, leadership development, a topic that is very, very important. I don't have to say anything else about that. Uh, very important for us, especially in these, these days and these times. Sean, I would invite you to include anything that, uh, that, um, that I've missed or correct any any mistakes that I made along the way, but I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, hearing your remarks today. Thanks. Wonderful. So greetings, everyone. It is indeed an honor to be with you today. Just want to confirm that everyone can hear me well. And I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the Delta Mu Delta individuals responsible for me being here today. So Dr. John Lewington, Dr. Kevin McCarthy, who just gave that wonderful introduction. Thank you, sir. Jeff Arnold, Joe Mayer, and Eric Goldman. So thank you so much for the opportunity to be here to share, learn, and grow. I'm immensely thankful for all the attendees, look like we're up to 107 and still growing, for your time and attention today. So welcome. I like to start with the what's in it for me, because because naturally anytime we dedicate our time to something, we want to have an idea of what's a takeaway. So I want this to be very interactive. And so what I'd like to ask people that are on, if you would type one word in the chat that describes what you hope to gain from today's presentation. And while those start to show up, confidence, confidence. Oh, that's powerful. Growth, inspiration, presenting, inspiration, insight, wisdom, growth, learning. Okay, those are great. Growth, learning, we're hearing some repeated. So inspiration, confidence, learning, knowledge, sharing, courage. Those are reoccurring messages. So I'd like to just speak to today's message um, would be definitely speaking to the Delta Mu Delta motto, which is, well, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, through knowledge, we gain power. So I like props. I have this little toolkit here. So my intent is to provide you with some information as we share today that adds and builds and expands your toolkit. So again, through knowledge, power. So Dr. McCarthy's given a great introduction. I just put this up here as just a recap. Um, I did serve 25 years in the United States Air Force. I had the opportunity to help reshape organizations on five different continents. 
my last tour of duty as a superintendent, I was responsible for uh, matters affecting morale, readiness, retention, personnel resiliency, recruitment of over 71,000 people. It was a beautiful journey. I learned a lot, still am learning, growing, created a beautiful uh, family outside of my immediate family and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to serve our nation and her allies and just cross paths with beautiful spirits. After retirement, as Dr. McCarthy stated, I became an entrepreneur. And today I really do try to spend a great percentage of my time helping to mentor and help cultivate next generation leaders. So again, thank you for being here. I take it that you all have that same interest as well whether you are that next generation leader or you're working with them, um, let's, let's do the work and continue to help people grow and excel. So here's what we're gonna talk about. Being impactful, a little bit about fear, respect, definitely trust, cooperation, empowerment. There'll be a call to action where you'll have some homework. And again, it's going to be very impactful. So, and interactive. So I'm not sure if everyone received the message to print out your little sign. I'm gonna figure out how to get this right. There we go. That says be impactful. You don't need it right now, but we will use it. Okay, there we go. We will use it. And um, hopefully at the end, we'll do a photo. It's okay. If you didn't get it, just grab a piece of paper or a note card or something and just put on there, Hashtag be impactful. You just do it on a, a piece of paper, something that you have at your desk or your space, or if you want to put it on your device and just hold it up, that's fine. But we'll use that towards the end. So let's get in this. So be impactful. So this is the book, Leadership is About Behavior. I personally believe leaders do these three things. They solve problems, they support the pack, which is their team and others, and then they develop new leaders. Every mentor that I ever had during my military career, one of the things they instilled in me was my role of creating my replacement. And so I've definitely tried to lead forward like that and bring people up behind to uh, just be that next level of leadership. So in the chat, can you type a one if you are currently a supervisor and a two if you're not? I'm just trying to read the room and see who's here. So, oh, that's a, looks like we might be 50-50. Yes, we're getting a good combination. Who, who put, what's three? It's three, you're both. Some days you're a supervisor of some organizations and some days you're not. So we got a combination. So thank you for sharing that. What I, I each of us show up ready to lead whatever organizations we're part of or teams, even in our households and families. I'm the oldest child, so I've been leading since I can remember. What happens is we have a vision and we know which way we wanna go, but sometimes doubt creeps in, fear creeps in. And that fear often keeps us from reaching our full potential. So let's just talk about that for a moment. I love this quote, fear is fire. You can let it cook your food or you can watch it burn your house down. And I think that's really powerful. So one of the things that we have to be aware of that leadership, being a leader is definitely challenging and frustrating, but I will say to each of you and my journey, it has been one of the most rewarding um, roles I have played and continue to play in life. Again, sometimes though that fear kicks in and it sets the stage to sabotage us. So I'd like for you in the chat to just type your greatest fear when it comes to leadership. What's your greatest leadership fear? Mine personally is the fear of disappointing my team. Let's see, failing my staff, failure, 
Okay, letting the team down, good. Failing someone, discrimination, failure. Failure's coming up a lot. Making the wrong choices. Not having enough knowledge, okay. Making the wrong decisions. Not succeeding, respect. We're gonna talk about that failing the team. Holding accountability, that's impactful right there. Wrong decisions. So thank you all for sharing. So, um, all of those, nothing, there's not, naturally not a wrong answer here, but that's how we feel. Those are some of the things we deal with. And you've captured those. Failure, criticism, speaking out, abandonment. You know, the higher you go in the rank structure, and it's not just in the military, but the higher you excel, um, it's a, it can be a lonely place. Decision-making, making this mistake, being accountable, holding others accountable. Uh, someone typed uh, complacency, um, imposter syndrome. Those are all things that we definitely must deal with. And so I'd like to just talk about how we deal with this. So I believe the battles that we have are first fought from within. So there's nothing we can do as leaders until we address self-awareness. And so that's taking that internal look at ourselves. How do you show up as a leader? And so Sean shows up differently than say Dr. McCarthy shows up and there's nothing wrong or um, no wrong or right about that. It's just being aware of how you show up and how people are perceiving you and how you are impacting their lives. So I love this quote by David Goggins that says, the most important conversation you'll ever have are the ones you'll have with yourself. So we're crossing this bridge from fear to being self-aware. And there's a process of going through that. And um, we're going to talk about that. So little pop quiz. Who knows what this bridge is? First person to type it correctly in the chat. I'm going to look for it. And then Eric, we're going to give them a book. Yes, Stephen McBrayer. I hope I'm saying your name right. You got it. And I might have to go back through the uh, through the notes because it seemed like someone did a uh, go. Oh, goodness. Every time I roll that, it switches. But it looks like Stephen was the person that says the Mackinac Bridge, the Mighty Mac. I'm just going to write your name down. But we might have to go look at that. OK, so let's keep it moving. Thank you for participating. So we talk about self-awareness. Impactful leaders, typically, hopefully, you will show up with, Dr. Dwayne Dyer says this, attached to nothing, keeping your mind expanded so that you're attached to nothing and open to everything. So that creates opportunity. When we're open to different mindsets, different people showing up with different ideas and protocols, that is an opportunity for us to advance and take advantage of the tools that that person brings to our team. The absence of attachment to things, ideas, concepts, beliefs, all of that allows a leader to transform and thrive. And then that allows your team to transform, transform and thrive. So I always recommend, or even when I have a team working on a project, that the group takes a self-assessment. It doesn't matter which of these, I just listed a few, there are more than this, but we've got the Meyer Briggs, we have here the um, Ford Lenses, 16 personalities, and then we have the DISC assessment. When we get to the end, 16 personalities were um, gracious enough to offer us a discount code, and I'll give you the discount code at the end that allow you to, to have a 20% off of some products that they offer. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But knowing how you show up as a leader impacts productivity, communication, and it also impacts conflict and how you handle conflict. So I recommend as leaders that you take an assessment, whichever one you choose, at least once a year. 
And then also as you move from different positions. So if you're a new employee entry level, you might have a different personality and I should say temperament or key personality. As you move through leadership, you become that frontline supervisor, that mid-level manager and that senior tier executive. It's possible that your temperament and leadership will change. So you want to periodically take this assessment. I'm gold if you do the four lenses. So I, I value order and structure. My life is chaos if that doesn't exist, but I have matured enough to realize that I need all the other personalities on that chart to make things go. So again, we want to definitely stay open to opportunities to embrace others. So four leadership behaviors we're gonna talk about today, respect, trust, cooperation, and empowerment. That's just our little overview. So getting into this respect. So a people poll, a survey of 500 US employees based um, from the book, Who, What People Want by Terry Bacon. You see that quote there. Uh, reveals what employees won't want the most. So what I'd like you to do in the chat is just type one word that describes a trait that you most want from your boss or manager. And I'll start reading some of those. Respect, respect is coming up high, kindness, accountability, transparency, understanding, acknowledgement, loyalty, communication, trust, honesty and integrity, communication, trust, good, um, look like I saw empathy in there, emotional intelligence, challenge, good, and communication. So those are definitely hitting home. Um, in tribute to my Air Force background, I have this photo of Chief Bass. She is the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. And this is her quote. When we treat airmen like they make a difference, then they will. So, and of course we can replace the word airmen with people, employees, members of your team. It's, it's true for all of us in our human experience. From this book that Terry Bacon put together based on his study, 84% of people wanted respect, trust at 86, fairness at 89, and honesty at 90. And these percentages placed higher over recognition, even over more money, people want to show up. And I think we can bundle all of these truly under respect, respect, trust. We'll talk about trust, fairness, and honesty. So you see how high those percentages are. That lets us know just how impactful this is. Um, so we definitely want to distribute or uh, exhibit those behaviors. So showing respect, I love this picture. Uh, he's now retired, Chief Master Sergeant Colon Lopez, we called him Chief CZ. And he represented, he was a senior enlisted advisor um, at the Joint Chief of Staff level. So all the people in the Pentagon making big decisions. The beauty of this photo, and let me build it for you is, Oh, let me go back, I'm moving too fast. Is in this photo, what Chief CZ did is he gave the young man here his rank that you can see there and goodness gracious. And then he actually put the young man's rank on himself. I think this is priceless. So this does, it shows respect. It shows representation. It shows this young man um, Airman Arroyo, that through determination, hard work, developing his craft, he can get to this level, we can get to this level and beyond. So what I'd like you to type in the chat is I wanted you, well, we already talked about how we feel when we show respect. So when people are respected, they feel valued, validated, trustworthy, honored, and worthy. And thank you again for typing your inputs in the chat. We've got a lot there and it's reinforcing what you see here. And um, when Chief ZZ 
did this rank swap. I mean, I think this young man will probably have this when he retires. He'll have this photo in his retirement ceremony because it is just that priceless. So what we always want to do as leaders, we want to find an opportunity to make these connections, right? We definitely always, always want to lead by example. Um, it is true that employees and team members will go to the end of the earth when they know how much we care exactly, Cynthia, and how we show respect for them. And that goes both ways. Another thing that we can do to show respect, it's simple. Some things are just simple as this, handshakes when you meet folks introductions, especially a senior member introducing themselves to a junior member, or better yet, a senior member introducing a group of junior members to someone at that senior level, and then eye contact. Now, I'm talking Western society protocols, because in other cultures, you know, there's different protocols for touching and eye contact. But in the Western culture, handshakes, introduction, eye contact, all of that conveys and is the first start of how we show respect to others. When you're in a circle of folks and, and these things aren't done, it shows, it could show as indifference. If, if people are in a circle and I walk up and I don't know the people, no one welcomes me into the group. No one says, hey, how are you? Or, you know, may I ask your name? Um, we want to be careful of that. So just three simple things. Um, just know good leaders show respect by genuinely listening to understand. That's another thing that we can do. Exactly, uh, Julie Ann. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I believe that's a quote from uh, Teddy Roosevelt right there. Um, ask insightful questions, show appreciation for their efforts and sacrifices and the things that they do to support the team. So let's keep those things in mind. Now, building trust. So let's type in the chat. If, if you can do it really well, probably, I don't know, that might be too long. I was going to say some things you do to build trust. Let's just go ahead and get it in there. And then I will try to read some, okay, that's a quote from John Max. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Julie, for that update. Um, listen, communicate, transparency, be genuine, okay? Actively listening, honesty, working with them, showing interest, transparency, sharing information, being honest. I love it. Those are all good. Here's a little leadership hack I use. So I actually have these little magnetic pieces. And when I'm on a team, the very first orientation meeting that we have, yes, Anne Mahan, truthful, being truthful and follow through, thank you all for sharing, is when I go into the session, I stand at the door as people come in and I actually hand them a piece of this puzzle, depending on what the group size is. And then after we go through our orientation and we talk about our goals and objectives, we talk about leadership style, I share what my leadership philosophy is, I asked the team member two impactful questions. One was their superpower, and two, if they were king or queen for a day, what would they change? And we get through all of that. We lay everything out. We have our conversation. At the end, we're ready to do our ready break and go conquer the world. I have a little board, and I have everyone put their piece of the puzzle back together so that it forms a circle. I think we all know the symbolism behind the circle. We're all connected. And I promise you, when we do this, you can actually see, it's, it's almost like a, like a um, what's, I forget what the cartoon was where they, they would say something about activate. And then I believe mean, it's the Transformers maybe. And they would all come together and they would unite and they would form this one massive power. When these pieces of this pie come together in this circle, Power Rangers. Okay, thank y'all. Yes, Wonder Twins activate. That's it. Thank you, Andrea. Um, that's what we would do. And so we put it together. I just call it making magic, right? And you could just actually see people's eyes light up. You communicate what the protocol is. You communicate how you're going to share information, how you're going to work together. I'll tell you what this does. It instantly disarms unhealthy practices and cultures within your team. 
Infighting goes to zero, I promise you. Domination, any type of dysfunctional group norms within that team, they go away because nobody has to compete for anything. We're all on even ground. We're all able to bring our talents forward to innovate and make this team high performing. It, it is, it, I'm not telling you, it's a simple exercise, but it is very powerful and impactful. So try it. If it works for you, please let me know and keep using whatever you're using that is working. And um, we want to build trust. So trust is earned when actions meet words. So that's powerful right there. Um, there was a study done by Paul Zach. He's the author of Trust Factor the science of creating high performance companies. And he asked the question, um, what do people value the most what, in, in, their, in their work, right? And so I'm gonna show you the results here in a minute, um, but it was, it was impactful. Look, let's look at these numbers here. So productivity. Well, this is the aftermath of what people get. But what they wanted was when people had trust, a strong sense of trust, productivity increased by 50%, satisfaction, career satisfaction increased by 60%, and team unity increased by 66%. So trust has a lot of beautiful attributes to it when we pull it together because we know people want transparency. You all have listed that in the chat today. When we treat people fairly and explain things, that's what we get. Um, another point from the study was people wanted to be involved in the decision-making process. No one likes to be left out in the cold. A lot of you could type communication, sharing information. That's important. People wanna be able to connect with the bigger picture. Uh, Simon Sinek says, start with why. We're gonna make a change to do something, tell the people the why behind it, get the buy-in and then they can move forward. But the why behind the what? So they can say, hey, how we thought about this? And it's not the emperor running through the streets with no clothes on, everyone has a role. And you can catch some of the big issues before they become boulders if you trust enough to share information. And then also show you care. And I believe um, someone typed in already, people don't know how much, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So when, question, when trust is questionable or missing, we know what happens. All of these things suffer, productivity, satisfaction, and then team unity. So we wanna keep that high. Build in trust. I just like to use this example. So when I think of trust, trust shows up in a lot of different teams, a lot of different industries and a lot of different ways. I love using this example of these defenders. These are security forces personnel that are assigned to the Cheyenne Mountain Complex. This location is said perhaps to be one of the most secure locations in the United States. The reason why I think this is such a powerful example of trust these defenders are guarding this facility. You also have civil engineers who have to make sure the HVAC system works properly. You have communications folks who have to make sure intercoms and telephone systems and satellite systems work. There's a medical team there. There's a team that feeds everyone who works there. There is um, a, a, a wide array of career fields of people with different talents and expertise in this facility. The reason why trust to me is so important is because in this facility, they are 2000 feet underground. Just think about that for a moment. So I gotta make sure that the civil engineers have properly shored and are doing checks. Someone has to do structural checks on this facility to make sure everything's intact. The fire, the chief of the fire department in this facility and that team, they have to make sure that they have lit everything properly, that they have the proper signage, alarm systems, lights, um, sound, um, everything. If there's ever a fire, right? That fire chief has to know this place 
almost in their sleep to help get on the public announcement system and navigate people to safety. If I work in this facility, I can't be worried every day that if there's a fire, will I be able to get out of here? So that trust is just enormous. And so um, wherever you work, whatever your industry, whatever level you're at, just know that each of us show up with the ability to show trust in the ways that we've talked about sharing information um, and just helping that team move forward. When we talk about boosting cooperation, again, I love imagery. So a synchronized swim team, who must cooperate, right? There's a lot of industries. Okay, a surgeon in an in a emergency situation needs a team and there's a lot of cooperation there. I love this example. When they are doing these routines, and listen, these routines can last five to six minutes. They never can touch the bottom of the pool, these synchronized swimmers. When you see them doing those leaps and the jumps and the twirls, they are using their bodies almost as a flotation device for that individual who's doing the jump to create a platform, a bridge, if you will, so that they have the strength for that person to do a leap. They are all working in a synchronized motion. As a leader, we want to employ this same mindset. We want to create a, a, a teaching culture where people can learn, but they have the opportunity to make mistakes, but they are still able to move forward. You wanna be that coach. You wanna encourage the team to be interdependent so that when they have challenges or questions or doubts, they turn to each other. That's that trust kicking in and that respect kicking in and they learn from one another by sharing information. So also the practice of, we'll talk about this even more, a dynamic subordination. So when you're comfortable with the person closest to the problem, right? If you let the person who is closest to the problem, who knows the most about what's going on, you empower them to actually solve the problem. Now you don't take your hands completely off the wheel as the leader. You just step back a little bit, push that person forward and let them take the lead and you still provide the support for them to get where they need to go. So we see this concept, dynamic subordination. When you see the birds flying and they're in that V pattern, so that lead bird is actually taking on about 60% of the headwind of the, the air. And they fly for a little bit and then they circle around and someone else takes the lead. And they, they just keep doing that format where one's up and they shift back and one's up and they shift back. We incorporate that in our leadership style. The person who's stronger, who's smarter. As leaders, the ego has to go completely out the window. And you have to say, you know what? If I'm the smartest person, I used to have a, a, a colonel that I worked for, Colonel Gammon. She would always say, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. That's how we want to be, right? Leaders don't have to make the best decision they have to make sure the best decisions are made. Let's say that one more time. Leaders don't have, can someone type that in the chat for me? Leaders don't have to make the best decision. They just have to make sure the best decision is made. So leader equals best decision made. Let's move on with that. Empowering the team. Okay, so let's start right there. Here's a quiz. Who can unscrabble this word the first? Who's the first person to unscrabble this word? Boosting cooperation requires that we do what as leaders? Uh, who said communicate first? I'm gonna have to go back. Oh, fiddles, y'all are fast. Whoever said communication first, I'm put in my notes, Eric, that person will win a book. I have to go back. I think we'll be able to do a... Um, I um, look at all the notes. Okay, so yes, the word is communication. In order to boost cooper cooperation, we must be willing to communicate. And that means share information freely. Let's talk about empowering the team. So this study by Tiny Pulse, 
2019, they looked at 2,000 respondents or they received responses from 200,000 people. They looked at individuals across 1,000 companies from 20 different industries. And they said, the question was, how valued do you feel at work? And so you see the scale there where you can see the numbers, 33% undervalued, 41% somewhat valued, 26% highly valued. Okay, 33% though, undervalued, that is a lot. And I'm sure for a particular industry, we can quantify that. And it's probably millions of dollars. I don't know any company that wants to intentionally lose millions of dollars. So as leaders, you show up, we want to think about this undervalued population of people. Probably they feel they don't have any control or any autonomy at work. And we know those two things, control over what people do, a sense of purpose and autonomy adds to how they feel regarding job satisfaction. So, and I mentioned it before, if, you know, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. We want people to be able to show up and bring their time, talent, and tenacity to whatever our mission is, whatever our goals are, and advance that initiative or that effort. So one of the things I said in the beginning, when I have a team, I ask two questions. One of those questions was, what's your superpower? And so I think we all show up, we come in the world, little kids, you know, we can do anything, we can fly, we can scale mountains, we can do a lot of different things. One of the things, okay, thank you Annette Williams for that clarification. Miranda, Miranda unscrambled it first, okay. Um, we show up with the ability or at least the belief that we can do anything. And somewhere along the way, we lose that. As leaders, I challenge you to find out from your teams, from the people in your nonprofit organizations, wherever you work, in your families, your children, your spouses, what is their superpower? What do they bring to the family dynamic? What do they bring to the industry that you're in? What is that? You, I don't want to be, this is a non-judging zone. I found it very beneficial for me as a leader to know what everyone's superpower was. So um, I will say it, like I said, if you're if the team is smiling at the end of the day, I think you've tapped into something and you want to keep that going. If you look around, if you walk into a room and, and people are just gloomy and there's no some sense of liveliness or some chatter, not all the time, but that should happen sometimes. We want to look and touch back. Do we know what the superpower is for our teams? Maybe there's something we're missing at lead, as leaders that we're not tapping into and they feel a little um, suffocating or, or just underutilized as we talked about um, as far as tapping into talent. So you can make a difference and it's less than 30 minutes. So on your piece of paper, your call to action, this is gonna be your homework. Um, we wanna push this head on. So I'd like you to capture something that in the next 30 days, let's yes, let's go 30 days that you will do that will boost your toolkit for the benefit of others, okay? So list the action. What is the thing you will do? I tell everyone, as a leader, you can start instantly just by putting kindness in your voice, how you, how you address folks. Um, share your talent with the team. Um, sometimes some of us, because we feel slighted or we don't feel included, whatever the case may be, we withhold ideas. And sometimes that's keeping the, top, the, the team from advancing. Not complain, thank you, Belinda. Okay, is that, that's what you're gonna work on? You're gonna not complain. Okay, that could be yours. Um, so if that's your action, time management. Okay, so that's the thing you're gonna do. And then the second part of that is the impact. So who will that benefit? So Miss Belinda, if you're not going to complain, who will benefit from your action? 
and you, you know, you can identify a group or a person, maybe it's a client that's going to benefit from the interaction that they have with you and you not complaining. Okay, so somebody's type of students will benefit. So whatever your industry is, capture who will benefit. And then lastly, what is the result? So you're going to not complain. It's going to potentially benefit family or students or the entire team. I would say the entire team or whoever you're surrounded with. And then what will your action improve? So improved attitude, energy is there. People will be energized. Okay. So whatever that is, whatever that thing is for you, let's capture that. That's going to be our call to action. You want to look at it daily to make sure you're staying on track. And then once you have mastered that particular thing, then just keep going, add something else and just keep going and keep growing. So I wanna make sure I'm staying on time. I know we, st I should have timed this to see when we started, but I wanna be respectful of everyone's time here. Yes, Lakeshore Learning, I, yes. That's where I got that magnetic fraction from. Miss Williams is from Lakeshore Learning. I love them. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that we had some, some, some tokens here. So I'd, I'd, I don't know if it's too many people to do a QA and a or if we have time to do a QA. and a but let me just go through the briefing here, the debrief, and then we'll see. Sean, so, Sean, yes. this is Jeff, and you have, you know, you have as much time as you necessary, as you want, as okay. necessary, okay. so you're fine with that and you started about 1205 uh, so okay okay yeah. thank you thank you so let me just put this up in case some people have to leave i want to make sure everyone has the information so from 16 personalities oh fiddles there we go so from 16 personalities.com if you use the the um discount code be impactful which we started in our discussion with be impactful you don't need the hashtag there but just be impactful it will entitle you to 20 percent off any of their 29 dollar ebooks they have 19 dollar personality packages they also have a 49 dollar complete suite where if you have a group of folks you want to as the manager leader have your entire team take an assessment you can use that 20% off. And the beauty of this discount, y'all, listen, is it's good until the end of the year, this year, 2023. So share it with your friends, share it with other leaders and managers. Um, I think it'll be a, a good resource for you. So I want to do Q&A. Oh, uh, we have drawn. So five people will also win a signed copy of book in addition to the person who gets communication correctly. And there was one other one in there. I'll go back and look at it. So there'll be seven book giveaways and um, we'll have that, but that'll be after the, the session. Um, you'll get an email if you are the, the lucky one and we have some numbers we're gonna pick from. Okay, so we have that now. I want to, we have some time, so let's do, oh, the bridge winner. Thank you, Miss Patty. Yes, the Mac, the mighty Mac. All right, so I'm going to see if we have any questions out there. And I think I have to unmute something. Okay, I, I just changed this where you all can unmute yourselves. Or I can look in the, the the chat. Okay, where can you purchase the book? So individuals, like I said, that have made the correct guesses or the first to guess, there were a lot of correct responses. And then the the um the drawing will get the book. You can purchase the book from uh, bookbaby.com and then Amazon has it as well. It's on Amazon, it's on Book Baby. Yes. Okay, I plan to place a bulk order for my team. Okay, Miss Alfred, let me know what that number is. And, you know, depending on how many you're trying to get, we can probably do some type of a discount if you want to order directly from me. All right. So um, 
we, t- we opened the discussion talking about three things that impactful leaders do. Again, I think they solve problems, they support the pack, and they develop next generation leaders. I stated that I believe each of you are here on this session today because you are dedicated to those things. We covered how high performing, effective teams and leaders work or attributes that help them thrive from a leadership perspective, showing respect, building trust, boosting collaboration, and then empowering your team. Before we can get there as leaders though, we need that self-awareness. We need to be aware of how we're showing up. Um, And so in order for our people to be cohesive and resilient, we need to be those things first. And we need to, again, hone, I don't like to call them weaknesses, but opportunities for improvement. Those are some of the things that we need to look at. So at this time, I'm going to look in the chat and see if we have any questions. You have the ability to unmute yourself if you just want to mic up and ask a question. And then we'll just go with that until I can get through the questions. Okay, I have a question. Um, Miss Lucy, yes. Hi, yes. Lucy Bent, a business management student and also a former Air Force veteran. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes, y'all. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> I've got Master Sergeant. Woo. Thank um, you. Thank so you for my, your service. Thank you for your service, Chief. So my question, Chief, is have you considered um, your own podcast? Um, just because, you know, times change. The book is a great resource, but is that something that uh, you've considered with podcasts now uh, being a, a resource for so many of us? Well, Miss Lucy, I appreciate your question. From your mouth, um, my husband has been saying that probably for the last year. You know, I I just don't know where I would find the time. <laughs> I, I I am warming up to it, ma'am. And I, I'm not gonna put a date on it because then you'll I have to be accountable to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I, I'm working my way to it. Um so that that personality of mine, that A personality kicks in. And I already feel like, you know, I've got to have two years worth of material mapped out in a full production schedule. My mind goes into a totally different overdrive. I will just say I'm working on it and I'll get there. But I appreciate your vote of confidence. And I let my husband know that someone else said it and it was a lady and she's a master sergeant from the Air Force. And then he'll say, well, then you'll probably do it because (laughs) All <laughs> right. So thank you. Thanks, Chief. Okay, appreciate you. Um, they can be very short, like a TED talk. I, I I got a concept, Kathy. I just I'm work on it. I'm a work in progress, but I'm putting it in my notes. That could be my call to action right there. Podcast. I wrote it on my paper. I got it. Thank you all for your vote of confidence. Okay. Um, repeat question. I'm currently a mentor. What's the best way to motivate the mentee to do what you ask? So I'm going to just hold you right there, Miss Williams, with that what you ask. So let's go back to self-assessment just a little bit, a little bit. That, that, that part of your question is sticking out to me, that what you ask. So my concept of mentorship is helping the individuals grow. And so sometimes we have to start with meeting the person where they are. And meeting them where they are, you create small successes to get them to the greater things. So I would need to know what that, what you ask, what is that? Are you asking them to be more accountable? Are you asking them to, I would need to know what that ask is. So we're going to let that marinate, come up with a mentee, mentor mentee agreement. You can, but again, to take action. Okay. Take action in professional development. Y'all, I go real deep. Professional development to take action. In, in what area are you trying to focus on? So I think the agreements are perfectly well. The start of the agreement, though, is what is the person trying to do in their life? And what do you see the potential for them to grow and be? 
And you gotta find where those two connect because sometimes in my career, what people wanted of me was not the vision of what I wanted for myself, especially when I became a parent. And so I had a lot of struggles with mentors who saw me as a command chief and they saw me as um, just these higher positions in the Air Force but it was a conflict with what I wanted to do as a wife and a mother. <clears throat> so I would say that's the first start. Example, you show them how to do a particular thing to reach a goal, but they don't do it. And so then I would say, then you, you go back and you maybe break it down into smaller steps, Miss Williams. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe the task, either aptitude, attitude, or altitude is just, just too much. So maybe if you can, yes, exactly. Some common goals clearly defined, just baby steps, a smaller, just smaller wins. And it boosts the person's confidence so that they can go on to bigger chunks of that goal might be a way to attack it. And uh, thank you, Nita, Nida, for your recommendation there, definitely. Okay, got it, smaller wins. I, I would say start there and try that because it could be a confidence. And, and here's the thing leaders, what we sometimes underestimate is people. our people don't want to fail. They don't want to fail us. And so if I give you a task and I say, okay, go do this, go conquer the world. Sometimes they're scared that they won't live up to that expectation. All right. Um, all right, how can you best coach employees in supervisory positions to better leverage accountability, helping them be stronger and more effective leaders? So again, start by example, Erica, set that example. Um, and then I would say, create a process. So when we want people to be accountable, we got to naturally, I'm not sure what the, the the uh, mission or vision statement for your team or organization is, but definitely you want to make sure with however you're operating aligns with that mission and that vision statement. So everybody's on the same sheet of music and moving in the same direction. So I would say maybe do a reset and call them in, not in a punitive way, but when you have one of your orientations or your staff meeting, just talk about what's the goal, what's the vision, what's the mission, where, where are we moving in the same direction? And then talk about rules of engagement. What does perfect, perfect alignment with the way we wanna move for accountability, what does it look like? And also what it doesn't look like. And when you put those, what it doesn't look like examples out there, state some things that you've seen, without ascribing a name to it, we don't want to put anybody on the spot, but say, hey, when, you know, I'm from Detroit, so we got a lot of, well, we used to have a lot of automotive industries, but I had a lot of family members who worked in plants. And so some of their mentality was almost like the military. You got to be at work this time. You know, if you're a civil engineer, that truck has to be loaded up and you got to be rolling out to head to a job at that time. Very punctual. So let's just say in your industry of punctuality, it's one of those things where accountability is very important. You could say, hey, I'm concerned that when we start the shift, people who come in 15 minutes late does X, Y, and Z. So it puts us, we, we serve less customers, we lose productivity, um, we have to then go and try to get overtime, which typically doesn't get approved. Show them the flip side of that without stating any names and, and just have that conversation. Talk about those rules of engagement, what the good behavior looks like. And then after that, explain the process. When this doesn't happen, these are the steps we're going to have to take. And so when you put that out there, you know, first offense is a, maybe a verbal counseling. Second offense is some type of written um, uh, reprimand. And then it gets progressive in nature as the offenses go up. You first got to tell people about it. And then after that, everyone on that team has to be willing to do that. So Sean shows up with her pom-poms and everybody loves her. If I show up 10 minutes late, 
You can't let it slide. You got to put, you got to give me the verbal reprimand. You got to put the paperwork on me just like you would anyone else. And so the consistency comes into play and then just see how that will work as a start. I hope that answers the question. It so, does. It okay. does. I, I think uh, I was coming more from the perspective of trying to uh, trying to help my leaders have the courage and the ownership to have those types of conversations. Mm -hmm. I think the mechanics like it's okay. easy, right because then I think you 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 can end up with leaders that are more punitive like you know what I mean like sometimes there's no grace given and sometimes grace needs to be given depending on the case but I find that my leaders are struggling with that courage and ownership to even begin to start to address some of the behaviors that don't align with our mission and our goals. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, if you have the opportunity to say, hey, we've got this discount for the 16 personalities, you know, you might want to start there and let them see their own strengths and then opportunities for um, improvement. So like if I do the 16 personality, my for my personality, my strength is reliability and um, just very thorough. The flip side of that is I can be intense. So when I had teams, especially when I was in a like a deployment environment where I mean everything's moving fast and you got to rock and roll every day, I know I can be over the top. I created cold words with my team and we, we would call it um, um, over it, we actually use the term over the top. And so we're in staff meetings and we're talking about something and I'm going and I'm in the zone and and I look around and everybody's being quiet. And then it all it took was one member of my team, and we've already talked about this, so it was perfectly well for them to use it. All the rank goes out of the room. They would say, ma'am, that's over the top. And so that was my, my key to say, okay, Sean, it's, it's a little too much for everybody right now. Throttle back a little bit, reassess, look at it, ask for recommendations on, you know, what's maybe a better route. In your case, it might be helpful to show the flip side of your leaders saying, hey, when we, when we allow X, Y, and Z to happen, here are some things that can result. And sh show, them, show them the fully broken picture. Just, just show, show it, put it out there. And then, and say, but come to the table with the recommendation. I would recommend that when, you know, you know, when you are faced with the challenge of correcting a behavior, call the person in private, have a discussion, tell them the behavior you observe, reinforce that you're not punishing the person, you're attempting to correct the behavior. And we need to correct the behavior because maybe it's impacting us with client relations, maybe it's impacting us term internally, the um, morale is going down, show them what's broken, but make sure the focus is always on correcting the behavior. Maybe that'll help. Okay, divide the person from the sin. Exactly. You you just you just we're on the behavior. We're, it's nothing personal. Um, that over the top sounds like part of the trusting team trusting. Yes. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you for being here. Mr. Ripley, I appreciate it. Um, okay, any other questions? Um, what was that one? Okay. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate you for being here. Someone did ask me, do I do training? So I this this presentation that you've seen today, um, I presented to DoorDash actually in November. So it can be a half day workshop, leadership workshop, or it can be a full day. And during those workshops, there's actually hands-on activities that we do with each of the concepts that were presented to further reinforce the concept of um, showing respect, building trust, boosting collaboration, and then empowering the team. So yes, I tell everyone, have passport, we'll travel, invite me in. Um, my contact information is there and you, you'll have it. So, okay, I'd like to recommend you to, okay, please recommend me. Um, when you recommend, um, just let me know if you'll send me an email because I do offer a 10% uh, referral fee. 
So when I'm paid to go somewhere, whoever recommends me, I'd like to say thank you by sharing that. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, it was an honor to serve the nation. And um, for those of you who are on the call who have served or supported someone uh, who served or the spouse of someone who served, thank you too. Uh, uh, um, excuse me. Uh, so your four main points were building trust, communication, empowerment, and what was the fourth Sean one? Respect. So showing respect first, building respect. trust. Yes, sir. Boosting cooperation, and then empowering the team. And I guess- Got I it, thank you. Uh-huh, thank you. All right. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. And thank I appreciate you, Sean. Thank you, Gina. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank sir. You. I appreciate your question. Someone thank you, Sean. Hand up, though. I don't wanna miss, uh, who is that, Mr. Leo? Did I miss you? Someone's hand is up right here. Are you saying hi? Hi, it's my hand. Okay, yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, it, I don't. I don't want to make it too long, but uh, basically, my my current situation is I I play soccer in a college in a college school, and and I'm a, so I'm a student athlete, but I'm injured for a, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Our team. Uh, has not been doing any good uh, lately. And there's a lack of leadership, a uh, lack of accountability. And I'm just um, concerned about how, how can I, how can I make a change if like, I cannot be a behavior example in the field. I cannot be like a, like a leader in, inside the pitch mm -hmm. and that doesn't that and because of that it doesn't give me the authority that I think it would it would it would help if I was in a pitch and if I was you know um, scoring goals and and showing my performance and that would help me to be a leader I, th I believe that and but I can't so I'm outside of the pitch I'm every day going to practice try to you know do whatever I can to. Um, to, uh, to help the team the way I can. So like, if I have to be the water guy, I'm the water guy. If I have to collect cones, I'm collecting cones. But um, we don't have a leadership and we have a lot of players who have um, very bad habits. And it's very hard because like we set a goal, like, oh, we're gonna have, uh, we need a 3.5 GPA by the end of the semester. And then at the end of the semester, we have like a 2.9 GPA. We schedule uh, a meeting uh, with the advisor director and it's at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. and half of the team shows up. Like, what is what is it like? And, and, and how, how do you deal with the people that are just um, so, it's just their bad habits. How do you, how do you change that? Because it, it's, it's something like, uh, it's part of them. And to change that, it, it becomes very hard. Uh, uh, we try to show them the benefits of, of being accountable, you know, the benefits of showing up to practice every day. But um, things don't change. And I don't know if it's a lack of harsh, uh, harshness from, from the coach, if he needs to punish more, if he needs to show more uh, why you should be here. And, and yeah, uh, I try to, that's the question basically. <laughs> Okay, so let me try to take a step at that. I would say this is on three levels and thank you for your question. So I would say the first one is focus on you. So the, the you of this is no matter where we are in an organization, whether you're the star player, whether you're the person who just joined the team or you're support for the team or you're the actual coach, everyone wears a hat, everyone plays a role. So the first part for you to start with you be that example of what of example that you hope everyone else will um, reflect on and imitate from you. So you mentioned you were injured. I, I'm gonna just make throw a few things out there. Perhaps there's a role that you could play. The coach is busy, you know, doing strategy and setting up operational stuff. Maybe there's a role that you could go to the coach and say, hey, I've noticed um just um 
low attendance at our study groups. I've noticed, noticed that you know different things aren't happening. I would like to take on the role of um, like an assistant manager or whatever the, the title is, right? You don't necessarily need a title to lead. There's a wonderful book by Robin uh, Shermer, I believe is his surname, that talks about this. You can lead anywhere. But ask to take on a role where you get to further demonstrate that example that you want others to follow. And so because you're a player, you know how the other players think and you probably speak their language maybe a little bit more than the actual coach. So instead of scheduling a meeting, an academic meeting on a Saturday at 11, I mean, these are young people who wants to get up on a Saturday at 11, maybe you talk to the group and there's a better time to meet. Maybe Sunday at six is better. They've done their ripping and running and hanging out with their friends and whatever they like to do. And they've done their laundry and they're ready for the week. And now, okay, ready, set. Maybe Sunday evening is a better time. But try to take on a role where you can lead that group and showcase behavior and expose them to things that will help them be that more accountable and more effective leader because it'll show up on the field as well. We know when you, we model these behaviors in our personal life, it just carries through everywhere else. Now the them, the team, understanding what motivates them. And that can be different for each person, but there are certain things that they respond to and there's certain things that they don't. And you being a team member, you have um, inside knowledge of what those things are. So use that leverage, that knowledge to get them together, to have conversations. Maybe you invite some other coaches in to talk or um, an instructor or a professor to talk about something. And it doesn't have to be extensive. You could do a 30 minute session where someone comes in and teaches them about team building, right? And you have all that capacity right there on your campus. And then the leader, go to the coach one-on-one -on -one, because we never want to put anyone on the spot and say, hey coach, you know, and use I statements. I've noticed that lately the team has done X, Y, and Z. And what I would like to see is all of us working together, all of us being responsible, all of us being accountable. Would you be agreeable to me once a month or twice a month setting up um, 45 minute sessions where we can come together, you find a space where everyone can come together at a certain time, and just host many team building um, sessions. And you create the schedule because you're the driver, you've got the, you're gonna be empowered to do this, but come with a plan. So anytime you wanna affect change, right? You identify what this thing is you're not crazy about. You see a solution, you create the solution, you present it to the individual who has the power to say yes or no, do it in private so nobody feels embarrassed. And then you step out of the way. Sometimes you got to realize the leader might need time to let that marinate. And then sometimes they might say, no, I'm not going to do it. And they might just take it on and do it themselves. Don't worry about who gets credit for it. As long as it's get, it gets done and it benefits the team, let it move forward. But the first part of it is, I think, is taking that step and saying, hey, I'll take this on. Here's what I'd like to see. Here's what I'm willing to do. Here's how you can help me do it, coach. And then, you know, let the coach scoot out of the way and, and you drive. Hopefully that helps. Can you support any other leaders? Can you identify? Um, can you support any other leaders you can identify to be a super follower? So John Maxwell has books on followership, uh, the 360, 360 degree leader. Um, again, no matter where you are in the organization, you bring value to the leadership dynamics of a team. And that's a very good book, sir. You want to check that one out as well. Okay. But yeah, I would start with saying, hey, this is what I see, coach. Here's what I'd like to do. And again, do small things. Don't try to conquer the world in two hours. 
Just pick, you know, if there's five things you don't like that the team is doing, pick the most egregious, like punctuality. They're not being on time. A quick fix for punctuality. If everybody needs to be somewhere at 1030, every time you send a notice out, put 930 on there or put 10 o'clock. They'll get there at the time you want them to be there. I'm an event planner. I always do that. Okay, I think focusing on yourself and working on yourself changes the dynamic of the situation just to be the best you. Yes, Ms. Garcia. And then it just kind of propels from you, right? When I'm making Sean the best Sean that I can be, even people that we call our haters, they're noticing and they're like, oh, wow, she's killing it. How is she doing that? Well, she's very focused. She's very reliable. She's helping other people grow. She's sharing information. She's being transparent. She's being accountable. And that's working. And those people will start to also um, showcase those behaviors without you ever opening your mouth. All right. Thank you, Ms. Garcia, for sharing that. Yes, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Ms. Sophia, and I'll follow you back and see what you're doing in your world. Thank you. I think there are a lot of egos on, yes, there are a lot of egos. And so again, as you pick the different things, maybe there's a professor who did a dissertation on toxic leaders. Have them come in and just do a little 20 minute stint with a little activity that can drive home, you know, people remember what they get to do. So maybe there's someone who can come and speak on toxic leadership. It's, it's real. And, or just egos, you know, separating the egos. And I, I, I think you'd be a great um, change agent for that team. But again, just start small because you don't want to overwhelm them. All right, where we're at. I think we were going to try to take a picture. Someone asked how they could contact me. Um, either LinkedIn, just Sean Barnwell. You can do Barnwell Publishing at gmail.com. You can find me that way or on any social media platform. You just type Sean Barnwell whatever hits, then just send me a message that way. Okay. I don't know if we, if we can get a photo now. We might have, I don't know how many screens we can see. And then uh, the idea behind this was for everybody to just kind of hold it up by their name and then we take a photo, but I think we might be good. We'll post this video on um, the Delta Mu Delta YouTube. So, so if there's nothing more for me, um, Mr. Arnold, it's definitely a pleasure. Dr. McCarthy, thank you so much. Eric, I appreciate all of the marketing expertise. I have names captured for the books that will go to people from today. I'll have to scan back through that. Thank you, Miss Lucy. Please call me Sean. It's all good. I appreciate you. Thank you for your question. And um, I got the podcast on my list. It's on my list. I, it's on my list. All right. Everybody have a great day. Stay impactful. Uh, D1 senior athlete. Oh, okay. He's getting, oh, he's a psychology major. Yeah, you're going to be perfect for them. I'm going to see if I can get this A G R B. Okay, I will send you that book that I mentioned, The Leader Without a Title. All right. Couldn't get my name. Pat Hunt. Doctor, okay, Pat Hunt. Well, thank you for being here. All right. Mr. Arnold, you've got any other announcements? I think we are wrapping it up. There we go. <clears throat> no, I think you've done really well, Sean. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording at this point. I wanted to run through the question and answer section as well.
but and you really held the audience quite well there were very few people that dropped out during the there have been some during the question and answer but there are very few that dropped out during the actual presentation i do mean very few so it was an excellent presentation i actually got two emails from people who, who emailed me directly and said that it was it was very good so you've done a great job we really appreciate it and thank you so much did you want to repeat any of the contact information again before you go I, I can. Um, so email is barnwellpublishing at gmail.com. And um, on my LinkedIn, Sean Barnwell or Barnwell Publishing, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all, I think Instagram okay. is Be Well Publish, Barnwell Publish, because it wouldn't give me the whole ING piece. But social media, they can find me and I'll show sure. You know, and the link for the recording, I believe it will be emailed. No, the link is is going to be. We can email it to the group, yes, but it will actually be on the DMD. Oh, it'll be on the DMD. Yes. Oh, and somebody put it up already. Very good. Dr. McCarthy. Yeah. Yes. And the, um, it'll yeah. be on the DMD YouTube channel, and it should be available. Uh, as Eric told you earlier, when we got together beforehand. Hopefully by the end of the week, certainly by no later than Monday, and it should be up. And, and frankly, it'll probably be up before then. But yet, as he told you, he's got a couple other projects running right now. So we'll get up as quick as we can. And it's been a terrific presentation, Sean. Thank you so much. Thank you and for the opportunity. Very good. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. And